Welcome to the German Tank Museum. We got a new tank. Um, this tank has the lovely name Versuchsträger Gesamtschutz, typical German word. Uh, it's roughly translated in um, experimental vehicle full protection, um, roughly. What you're seeing here basically is a Leopard 1 tank hidden beneath a superstructure that was designed to hide the tank from radar and infrared. Um, optical reconnaissance as well, as you see with the camouflage, but infrared and radar were the essential things. This tank was built in 1987, or around 1987, um, when infrared and radar became a real threat to armored fighting vehicles. On the one hand, thermal imaging was becoming more and more perfect and more and more widespread. On the other hand, the artillery was now able to combine infrared and radar to actually use intelligent ammunition and to choose targets on the battlefield. So the question was, how can we hide a tank on the battlefield? And the German engineers came up with this experimental vehicle, which still looks very futuristic, I think. Um, and this vehicle basically gave two answers. First of all, against radar, they used what later became widely known as the typical stealth look. Um, on the one hand, you got the shape. Um, there are no small parts. There are as few as possible gaps and uh, corners and um, parts on the surface. It's as smooth and wide as possible. And um, this makes the tank not, in, not invisible for radar, but um, harder to recognize on a radar. A second measure was to give this thing a whole coating with uh, radar absorbing um, foil on the, on the surface. Um, but this didn't survive the last 30 years. As I said, this tank was built in the 1980s. It's the only one and we are very happy it survived at all. Um, but the coating is gone. So imagine a thin coating with radar absorbing um, characteristics. So these were the two answers against radar, against infrared. It was all about re reducing the heat signature. The Leopard 1 has a characteristic um, exhaust design. Um, it's roughly a square at the, at the um, afterward part of the tank. And this square, where the fumes get out of the tank, gets very, very hot. On an infrared um, picture, it's shining bright. It's a perfect uh, uh, help for targeting, targeting the tank. Uh, so they had to reduce the points where the, where the heat actually gets out of the tank. So instead of getting the heat out of the tank at two central points at the side, which are often in the optics of the enemy, they first of all built a circular cooling system into the tank to cool down the fumes. Then the fumes go out at the, at the rear end of the tank and they go out beneath a, a cover. So they are hidden and they are diffused not an, they don't come out at a central point, they are diffused. So these four measures, cooling, getting it out at the back, not at the side, covering the whole thing and diffusing at the, at the same time, really reduce the heat signature of the vehicle. Thus, the vehicle is much less seen on an infrared picture. Additionally, the superstructure that is good against radar is also good for the IR signature because it's not directly bolted on the tank. There's a small distance, a small gap between the superstructure and the actual tank. Meaning there's also air between the, the two components, which means if the, if the actual tank, if the hull gets hot due to the uh, um, combustion engine or the, the heating or the actual firing of the cannon, the superstructure is away from it and staying cool. It's actually covering, it's hiding the hot tank. You can really see this um, at the tracks. There is the hull bin behind it. The hull would be really bright on an infrared um, picture, but the, the track covering on the sides have some distance. They are from a special material, or oh, would have been, this is all, um, uh, bio it's all polymers. Um, they would have been of a special um, material anyway, staying cool and covering the heat behind it. Of course, the heat shines through. You still see some heat on an infrared uh, picture, but it's not the same as a shining bright uh, hull really gleaming on the infrared um, of the enemy. So 
Um, these are the two me measures against um, infrared, two measures against radar. Additionally, we got the camouflage and uh, the superstructure would have been, of course, additional armor too. It would have, wouldn't have been uh, <laughs> paper or plastic, it would have been armor. So there's actually um, an uh, improved armor on the leopard tank. So the idea of an experimental vehicle full protection is really done. It's, uh, it's an, on the optic field, infrared, radar, and actual physical protection. So this thing was very, very full protection, very Gesamtschutz. It never went into production, obviously. Um, it's very obscure. It's a thing you won't find on the internet or very seldomly find. Uh, normally every, every prototype of everything is somewhere, but this stealth tank, so to say, uh, is seldomly found. Um, but the, the, um, the results of the, of the research, the results of the actual measuring what works, what doesn't work, how is heat deflected, how is radar deflected, what is going on beneath the tank and all this actually were used when modern uh, vehicles like the um, armored fighting vehicle Puma or the Boxer were designed. Um, these actually benefited from the results of the research around this vehicle in the 1980s. So it's a perfect example for Cold War technology that didn't immediately lead to something but, as, but is still relevant today because the results are still used in vehicles we build today. So this stealth tank is our newest addition to the collection. Come and visit. I think it's very impressive. It's nice to see live and you won't see it anywhere else. Bye.